Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and welcome back for another season of Survivor Football Analysis with uh, world-renowned expert, uh, Brave Jayhawk, Michael Jensen. We had a, a really uh, productive season last year, both from results, but forget the results. We also, um, I think that we taught, pe taught people a lot. Um, I'll, I'll refer to the Discord channel, which has kind of gotten a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of buzz the last the last uh, season, and I hope to push that a little bit more. So we're going to do it again this season. What we're going to do, and I'll go through it, is once a week we're going to do a video where we talk about, you know, we review what's important about Survivor picks, and then just really start, you know, giving our kind of a breakdown of our selections for the week. We're also going to be integrating kind of like personal stuff, uh, you know, talking about our own pools where – where appropriate. Um, what we can't do really um, is even either if we went live or within Discord, it's, we really can't give individual advice on who you guys should pick um, for 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 a number of reasons. Not to mention the fact that we'll get into this later is that everybody's pool is different. So for us to recommend, you know, something is is kind of is kind of silly. Um, for, for those of you that are just kind of joining us for the first time this year, um, I think it is important to just kind of uh, remind everybody who everybody is. So, um, Mike, give, give me a uh, give like a five minute or just kind of introduction of like who you are, where you came from, your history with survivor pools and uh, and just for a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll, I'll start with my survivor pool experiences so I don't or, or introduction so I don't forget it. I think. It was, it started in high, it started, definitely started in high school. I think it was the season that the Rams won the Super Bowl. I think it was 99. And I think the first week, it was just my dad's office pool. More or less, everybody took um, them to lose in the first week. And we didn't do it. So we, we ended up splitting it with the other person after one week. And then that team went on to be the greatest show on turf and won the Super Bowl. Um, after that, um, I went I went to college um, in 2001. I went to St. Mary's and I started playing a lot of poker. That's when I got into poker and I dropped out and I transferred to University of Kansas in 2003. Played a lot more poker there, ran home games um, in the dorms. Um, and I, I stuck with poker. Uh, and, and, and made that my, I guess my, called it my true passion starting in 2005. Um, and I still play as my main source of income. And uh, I'm, for fun, I like to teach swimming um, to, to kids. During the summer, I like to take my kids to the pool, love to go to Las Vegas and play the main event and uh, do some traveling to Mexico and Las, uh, California and Montana to visit my family. Um, and I love survivor pools it's uh my favorite it's my favorite form of gambling um it's a it's i try not to sports bet because i suck at it um but this is definitely an advantage uh of advantage game but it's fun because just like poker you can play absolutely perfectly but that doesn't mean you're going to win um it's not like chess where i'm going to lose the, to the better player almost every single time uh, it's nice to play a game when there's some luck involved. And last year I got very, very fortunate and years prior um, I've gotten very unlucky um, and it trades back and forth, but it keeps things exciting. Um, so what's interesting is, and again, I, I know, I know Mike just from event. I originally met him just on the, on the two plus two survivor boards, actually. You know, yep. I didn't know him too well from poker, um, but, but I met him just from, through there and you know, but one thing that he touched on that we'll talk about is when he says, well, I'm not really good at sports better. You know, I quote, quote, unquote, suck at it. The, the I, one of the things that we'll get into this pretty, pretty soon. The good thing about survivor pools is that, is that you, if you start having opinions on the, the sides of the sports betting uh, ledger, you're actually losing, you know, in, in survival. Yeah. And, and, and so, I've been doing, for those of you who haven't been noticing, I've been doing a lot of, you know, DFS content in the last couple of years. And also this year I got into doing some MMA betting content as well. And the, the, the thing that I was stressing is the, the difference between betting content 
and DFS content and similarly survivor content because when when you you're dealing with DFS, you are presuming that the the, the Vegas lines are accurate, and then you have to derive your you know your, your projections from the props and whatever. And, and likewise, in survivor pools, you have to just you have to presume that the lines are accurate. Where if, if, if you're betting, the the overarching presumption is the exact opposite that there's something wrong with the line. You know, so correct. Uh, yeah, two, two totally kind of different approaches. So I. I you know, got into survivor pools, you know, many, you know, several years ago, I'd say eight, nine, 10 years ago. Um, it's just another puzzle that I just kind of like to, to, to figure out because it's very, it's a very interesting puzzle um, in a lot of ways. And I have a partner who I went to college with, who is, I consider, I consider the, the sharpest non-professional gambler there is, you know what I mean? Someone that actually has a real job, you know, but, but he like picks, picks, picks and stuff. And uh, he got into survivor and we've been doing it kind of together for the last, you know, seven, eight years, we've had a couple of pretty, pretty, pretty heavy takedowns, you know, which, you know, we'll talk about one of these days. Um, and um, what's interesting about Survivor is that it's really, really hard. You know, it requires quite a bit of work and quite a bit of time commitment. And I have to say that between me and 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 my partner and Brave Jayhawk and his partner, I have to say that that if there's anybody that puts more time into it, during the season, I would I don't know if they exist. Okay. Cause I, I know how much time I put into it and I've seen how much time uh, Mike puts into it. It's it's a complete mental commitment for the entire it is. and to give you an example, like my partner Jack, I mean like he 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 and I for like literally seven months out of the year, I don't think I ever speak to him. Okay. And then for like four or five months out of the year, like he like my text and my phone is just dominated. By 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 conversations back and forth to him, we leave, and just like like Mike does, we no stone unturned. We just basically commit to this whole thing, and and it's it's very very draining. And for those of you who are thinking of playing, I will tell you that this is you know this is this is we're, 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 I think we're in a different echelon of that, but like these are the types of people that exist out there that you're going to be competing against. You know what I mean? Like like the, I don't know if, if, if that many like us, but but if you're thinking of just kind of going into Survivor and just having fun and just playing, you know, like the big favorite every week and just like get lucky and whatever it is. I'm not saying not to do it because I guess that could be fun, but you're just literally throwing money in the trash can right? because it is, it is hard and, and it's, it requires quite a bit of commitment. So let me, let me, I'm going to just go over um, what to expect from a content perspective. Then we'll talk about just some general survivor pool stuff. And, uh, and then maybe we'll take a quick look at the season or something like that. So, you guys, you guys know. I mean, I do a lot of DFS content with Bobby on true D, uh, uh, on, a, on a daily basis. And what we're going to be, you can expect, is that every every Wednesday uh, we're probably we're going to do a, a video just like this. We might do it on Zoom like this. We might go uh, live. Uh, it depends on on what I feel is best. And we'll go about forty five minutes or an hour, and we'll go over our we'll review what we what we like about Survivor in general. We'll talk about picks, and we'll. We'll, we'll get into it. And then what will be fun again is if we both have deep runs like we have to kind of follow us along our kind of, our kind of journeys. The other thing. Yeah. I, it, was, it, it was almost hypothetical uh, survivor last year, uh, but we, we got to play it out the whole, whole way through. But hi, at some point, if we keep doing this, we're, we're, we'll be playing hypothetical survivor in these, uh, in these videos. What we keep rooting for is we keep rooting for, you know, and that's the thing. I'm like, I keep rooting for everybody to, to keep advancing so that we, because listen, we would do the videos anyway if we're knocked out, but it's it's certainly more painful to do it when when you're knocked out. Um, I, I will point out this this one tool which we'll get to um later maybe later on in this video that is that we did put on True DFS, which is basically an advanced um EV calculator. And we'll refer to that a little bit later. But what we're going to always be referring to is usually Survivor Grid, and we'll get into what this is just for a minute for those of you that don't know what this is. Um, so. Let let's let's start let's let's start with this. Okay, I guess I'll let I'll get I'll let you start with this with this with this, with this piece. Talk to me about and these are the easy parts. Talk to me about the the two main um, variables that go into making good survivor picks and what whatever else you have as far as that overall uh, analysis goes. Yeah, the the two main hard uh, variables are winning percentage and pick percentage. Now, winning percentage is absolute. It's defined more or less. Uh, pick percentage is going to vary. Um, even in the last week, 
one of these teams it was either Minnesota or Washington was half of what it says right now. I think it must have been it must be Washington, but some pools are definitely going to lean stronger for certain teams. One of the pools that I play in is based out of Kansas City, and you're going to have we had some weeks and, and and this happened last year where Kansas City was very highly picked in week two. They, they lost to somebody and they were like three times more picked in our pool than in, than in the average pool. So th- that's why that one's going to vary a little bit, but you should always just assume it's, it's going to be more or less close to this on average, unless it's obvious um, for, you know, from what you've seen in the pool already, but pick percentage and win percentage are going to help determine who your who the best pick is for you this week. Well, let me let me let me put you another way. So I want to we we'll all talk the same language here. So the way I like to put it, I like to put the two variables in this form. Um, I look at 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 the combination of win percentage and 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 popularity as just one thing, and 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 that's EV. You know, so so what I look at is is the two to the two main the two main things you have to think about are EV and future value. Okay, that's the way I just kind of look at it. Okay. Yeah, that, that's where we differ because I I really I completely disregard that number for certain teams. Um like the bad team's fine, but you know, the team like on the top, I kind of disregard it because I don't want that to influence my decision. You mean the future like, value piece or the EV? well for uh Baltimore, like their EV is great, but because of their, their future value, I, I don't care what their EV is this week. Well, the thing is, is that is that what EV does is it calculates the the function of both. Yes, of course. Win, win percentage and popularity. Okay, and the idea being is that if you have two two teams with the same winning percentage, one of them is lower owned, you know, they're going to have better EV. You know, that's correct. Yes, yes. Leverage, but those are the these are the two things that that you're always going to be having to balance is is who's good this week, as opposed to. Who's going to be good later? Okay, and, and the idea is that is that survivor pool. It's it's kind of it's a, kind of a very clever misnomer. Okay, because they call it survivor pools, implying that all you really need to do is survive, and that should be your your goal is to survive. And what that kind of lets people do is say, okay, so who's going to win more often this week? If I need to survive, maybe I should pick them. But to win the survivor pool, you have to get usually right to the end. OK, and and the, this the most important thing is to figure out how you are going to get to the end. And 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 that is when you talk about future value. So like what you want to do in, in a in a perfect, you know, optimal universe is play a team today. Right. And this is not going to happen. Let's say you can find a team that, that you're going to play today. That's probably going to win that nobody else is going to play. Then you're also never going to play again. Okay, <laughs> that's that's kind of like that's kind of like um, Survivor Nirvana. Okay, if there was such a thing, if there was a unicorn like that. Now, obviously, if there's a team that looks good this week that is, you're not going to want to play again, then other people are going to see that, right? So, so that's why it's, it's 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 difficult to get get it perfect. And this is what's kind of neat about Survivor is that balance of how important it is to play a good low owned play this week, as opposed to, you know, the trade off of, well, maybe you'll want to use them even in a better spot in the following week. And that, that, that is the puzzle. Okay. And, and as we get kind of into the season, you know, maybe um, uh, uh, Michael share is like his overall like spreadsheet, his, his, his kind of overall season look. So let, let me just, let me just ask you, when did- I, want ex- I want to expand a little bit on what you said because you almost got to, to my point. Yeah. Not only do you want to find a way to get the end, you want to find it find a way to get to the end alone, right? Um, because getting to the end is not each path is not equal. There's one path that might lead ten people there for a ten way split, and there's other paths that's going to be a solo win. Um, and there's a balance between taking too much risk and not taking enough risk, finding the right balance between those things. So you are not sacrificing your uh, too much of your overall equity to get down to the end. 
Um, la last year, and, and I and I remember this very well in the first video. You said, "Just tell tell me why you know, this team's the best pick," and it, and it was it was the Saints for Week One, and I believe they were like two percent to win the game at one point, but they found a way to get there, and at least in the pool that I won, four of the five, three of the four people that made it to the playoffs took the Saints in week one. And that doesn't mean that you had to take the Saints to get there. What that meant was it helped you improve your chances by not taking other teams. Yep. Um, you know, so you had, you had some easier weeks yep. later in the season. Let me, let me ask you this. How much um... – I know I had to probably fend you off because I know that you wanted to probably do like a a, a video back in March when the seat when the when the when the schedule came out because I know that you're like really like on top of the on top of this stuff like like right like you're 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 more like my partner Jack like Jack right maybe not this season he's dealing with other stuff but but uh he would have like essentially like the whole season memorized by the time I even watch look for the first time, like, <laughs> which is like two weeks before it starts. Like, he, so that is, that is more or less how it goes for most seasons. I, I when the first, when the schedule first comes out, I'll spend a couple days, a couple hours a day, really looking at it, trying to find what I feel are, uh, you know, the inflection points of the season, uh, the big weeks, to, uh, you know, save a team for uh, the weeks that this is a week to take a shot. And actually, I spent very little time because I found the week that I liked so so much so quickly that I just stopped looking at everything else because the whole season was going to be determined so early on uh, that I was just going to wait. And then I, I really haven't done too many deep dives. I spent I spent a little bit of time, but you know, really less than ten hours so far since the schedule came out. Um, I want to get past that you know initial week that I'm referring to first. Um, but there are there are two other weeks that that really stick out to me. There's three weeks that really stick out to me in the first three quarters of the season that if if I'll, I'll say this a lot, if spreads were to hold, they're going to be very interesting weeks to plan for, save for, hold out for. Yeah. So, again, the one thing that's that's happened because of the uh, legalization of sports betting is you know, re reputable sites have started posting lines well out in advance. Um, so you could get a much better idea of, of, like you said, like assuming everything holds, right? Which it won't, you know, at least. But I think, but I want to tell everyone it's, it's important that you, you have to go off of something. Yes. And I would, I would rather go off of something absolute than some hypothetical. We know it's not going to be what it is right now week two four six eight ten but if you're not going if you're not going based off some absolute number that that is that is a reality and those are the spreads they'll have the spreads every single week for every week going forward more or less you got to go off of something and then it's when, when something changes you you pivot so i want to ask you and and i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna probably steal the easy one but I, you know, I think about like what to advise people if they want to be kind of an advanced, you know, advanced kind of survivor pool player. And what, 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 I guess I'm going to, I'm going to start about, you know, mistakes people make and whatever it is. I still think that one thing that you have to get out of your head if you're going to play survivor are these biases about football. Okay. And these biases about, teams and these biases about what you think okay and it goes back to what i said earlier and that was to just presume that the lines are right you know whatever it is but even people that know that that's you know conceptually what you're supposed to do i still see it i still see people post stuff in discord and in, in wherever that fails to appreciate that what you'll hear is people saying well, I, I know I want to play this team, but but I don't like to play teams on the road or something like that. Or or the real smart people are the ones who are going to say, I don't want to play teams in division rivalries or or I don't want to play this team in the rain. You know, or I don't I, I, I've heard people say, well, between these two teams, I'd rather go with this one because they have just the better quarterback or something like that. Just like kind of like qualitative 
things that that I don't know how to put this the right way. It's just all in the line. You know, like everything that 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 you think you know about football is all been considered and is all just kind of in the line. And and I almost want to say that if you're gonna go in my Discord, totally fine. But if you post something like that, I'm gonna like ask you to do like 10 push-ups. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm not gonna like yell at you and say you're dumb, but I'll just say, you know, like bias push-ups, you owe me 10 or something like that. And it's funny, I used to do that when I was when I played poker. If I made like a bad call or a bad whatever, I would post in there, I'm like, I owe 10 push-ups. So if, if I think that, that that's like at least the first thing you have to be able to do is presume that the lines are right, okay? Mm-hmm. Because aside from that, I mean, like, it's, it's, listen, it's hard enough to win. <laughs> it's, it's hard enough to win Survivor when you when you know that the lines are right. But but once you start, like, putting in your own opinions, then, then, then it, it becomes really, really difficult. Um, I, w- I want to jump off that last one because – Sometimes you can use this stuff to figure out who the, you know, what the best pick might be based on some of those biases. And the big week for us last, last year was week eight. Um, oh, in the probably, circa, yeah, in the, I can pull this up. They probably have that, right? Let's see. Yeah, I, I, I had to pull it up to make sure I got it right. This is 2002, week eight. Okay. So this was the week where, and this is in, in, the, in the circa pool where, the, we have a Thanksgiving slate. Buffalo and Dallas both played on that slate. Oh, Buffalo is a team you needed for ver- you could use for various spots, and, and really same for Dallas. And Philadelphia was on a run. Their three best games were that in the next two weeks. So I wanted to save Philadelphia for the end of that three game run, and I wanted to save Buffalo and Dallas for Thanksgiving or later. So I have to take somebody else. And what we did was. And I, I can't remember the exact ter- terminology I use, but it's something of like uh, if 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 the if the sound of that team made you want to throw up, that's the team I wanted to pick. Right. And that that's how I phrased it to my partner. And then we had, we, had, we have a couple friends that throw out their input. They have, they have small pieces, but um, I, I just asked for their opinion. And we weren't going to take Atlanta against Carolina because that was going to be the team that most pu- people oh, dropped that hey that was a pretty sharp fade actually and and i and we and, and i we did really well so we had like five or we got knocked out but we had like five or six teams to choose from and we had two entries and my goal was i want to pick the teams that no one else picks and uh we went through it and like well the colts are starting a, a rookie quarterback no one's going to want to take them okay well they're still three point favorites like the other teams okay we're going to take them and then the other one was like jacksonville like in London against Denver or something like that. And like, yeah, that, that, that feels like people would never want to do that. Cause that's just gross. So we took those two teams and no one else took them, which was fantastic. They both lost. And we were the only entries that got knocked out of 126 people left. But the point was we wanted to separate ourselves from that subgroup that didn't take those top three teams. And we, and we succeeded by looking at it from, a perspective of what would uh, superstitious pickers, who would they not want to take? Right. And that was, that's the way we decided who we took. And, and it just, it happened to be right. We took the two teams and we, and, and they both lost and it was painful the way they lost, but you know, the picks, the picks were, were fantastic. They just didn't win. Yeah. The, the other thing I would mention, and we'll get to more of this as we talk about the, um, you know, get a little more advanced or whatever. But if you're going to, um, this may be a little too advanced, whatever. Well, if you're going to map out your your path along the way, okay? If you're going to say, okay, I'm listening to Eric, I'm listening to Mike, I'm going to figure out how this works, okay? I'm going to say this team to this team. I don't want to play X, Y, Z in week one because, boy, oh, boy, look at how great they're going to look in week 14, like, for example. I think that doing that is 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 smart in general. You know what I mean? Like if 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 you see a team that looks good in week one, but you see them make me look even better in week fourteen, I think that's a good advanced beginner move to 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 fade them in week one so that you can play them in fourteen. Totally fine. But you have to try to get the the foresight to think about what they're really going to look like in fourteen. For example, like if if you're saving a, a bad team, okay. 
and you see that a bad team is finally going to be a big favorite in week 15, for example, and there's no other time that you're going to be able to play them. They're the worst, second worst team in the, in the league. Okay. And in week 15, they're playing the worst team in the league. So I am just going to just save them and play them week 15. Just think about this. That means that no one else is going to abuse them either. Okay. Because they're that bad and everybody's going to have them available and they're going to be flooded and you are probably not going to want to play them in the end. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So, so you think about, about, about future value. You think about saving teams for the future. Think about if you're really going to want to use that team in the future. Like sometimes you can play a team now, you know what I mean? Even though they're going to be better later because better becomes irrelevant if 70% of the people are going to be taking them. Um, a, a, a good safe way to save a team is if there's other viable looking options in the, in the preceding weeks to the week that you want to use them, because then you could audible off of saving them. If they have a bunch of tough games and I'm going to say road games, just because any, every team's going to win less on the road than at home. Um, but if they have, if the ideal week for a team that you're looking at is 14 and they're on the road in 11, 12, 13, and a couple of those opponents are pretty tough. That's a dangerous team to save for week 14, because you're, you're probably not going to be able to audible to take them in, in, in those prior weeks. Um, whereas if they're have a three or four game home uh, home streak and the other games look good. That's a team you could save because you can drop them on a number of different weeks and you're not holding out for one slot. I, I want to answer your question that you had on the biggest mistakes that yeah. novices uh, make in Survivor. The first one is it's, 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 it's an odd one. They don't take enough risk. They're way too safe. And I, I think it's the biggest mistake you can possibly make. And I, I, I joke about it, but I, but, I, but I mean it. When I see a path to victory or, or a good path to go on to get deep in the season, if I think that's the best path, I have no problem getting eliminated on that path and just being, and just being done with it in, in the first you know, three or four weeks. Last week, last year was almost week one. It was, it was, we took Cincinnati and New Orleans – Cincinnati lost and New Orleans was two and a half percent to win in the fourth quarter. Everything. It was almost all over, but it would have been great. I would enjoy, I would enjoy the rest of the season, oh. not, you know, being out of everything, knowing that I put myself in a good spot at the start. And it was actually the same thing that happened the year before when we got annihilated. We took, we took five teams and four of them lost in week one across all of our pools. And it was, it was, a, but I didn't even care because, you know, it's not about, I'm still going to watch football. Um, I don't want to use up a team that I that, that I know I'm going to need later, like Kansas City, or I think I might need later, which was like Baltimore last year. It, like Baltimore was, pre was pretty decently picked in week one. That ended up being a team you would have really liked to have at the middle of the season. And if Lamar didn't get hurt at the end of the season, you don't know those things, but you still have, you know, there's a much better chance that you're going to want Baltimore at the end of the season than like uh, Seattle. You know, on, on average, you ever, uh, um, you ever, take, take, your, take your chances early. And if you lose, who cares? Do you ever gamble in the casino? Rarely. Okay. I will be this weekend when I go to Vegas. I only gamble in Las Vegas. Okay. So, so when, when um, I played craps for the first time, somebody was, I don't know, this is, I don't know why I use this analogy. It's probably a terrible analogy, but I was thinking about it. Is somebody was, 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 playing craps or whatever it is. They said, keep this, 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 this. And then I'm like, oh my God, after like an hour of rolling or two hours of rolling, he crapped out and he lost so much money that was on the table. And you're like, yeah. no, you have it, you have it wrong. Like if, if you have a lot of money on the table, when you finally crap out, you made a fortune. Okay. And, and, yeah. and that's, that, that's, that's the nature of the game. That's how, that's how craps is played. And, and the way I think about this, about Survivor is this, is that as you go through the season, and you keep on like, like fading Buffaloes and New England and 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 KCs and Phillies and stuff like that. And you keep pushing them out and keep pushing them out. You know, you, you get this temptation to think, 
boy, I, I don't want to like, I don't want to lose and not ever having used Baltimore and Kansas and, and, and Buffalo and, 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 and New England and KC's or whatever it is. Tell you the further out you push these teams, like you, you're, you're just better off, you know, even if you end up busting as a result of it, you know, like it's almost like kind of a cool looking card to have got to like six fifteen, and we still had New England, still have all these good teams to just. Oh, I I take I take great pride in my runouts when when I'm out. I delete the spreadsheets right away, but I take great pride in them because I I set myself up well. Uh, yeah. You've already mentioned, and I want to mention as well that you know we can't hand pick your picks because each pool is different. I put myself in pools where I expect these pools to go the distance. My, my strategy is based on this pool is going the distance. And that includes one pool. I, they added a fifth or a sixth double pick week. I'm still going to play the thing that it's going to go to week 17 at least because we have doubles in 17 and 18. So I will take some tremendous chances. Uh, one, one, of my, uh, one of my gambling friends last year in this particular pool, it had over 20,000 entries and there was one week where there was a lot of blood and it was double pick week and I survived it. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is incredible. And then I look at my friend's picks and he, he took the teams. I didn't think you were supposed to take. Wow. He took Minnesota and Minnesota won, And I couldn't believe it. He, he still had like, I had four yeah. entries and, and he had, tw- he had 28 yeah. He had yeah. tw- out of like 250. I remember that. And I, I, I was, I'm like, I'm not going to say his name, so I'm going to be careful. I said, how did you do this? I mean, what is going – like, I, I was shocked. And then and, and the whole pool became – I had to try to – I knew how many entries he had. I knew how sharp he was. I, I had to play against him. I, I ended up getting knocked out maybe the same week as him, but he really, really went for it in week 11. I mean, he absolutely swung for the fences in the week before Thanksgiving. And – he got slaughtered. He took three games and they all lost. And he and he did not take Baltimore, and he didn't take whoever else. And I ne- you never you never should go on and online and, and 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 say anything in the message forums when people are bashing on somebody. But I couldn't help it. He well, put himself in such a great spot. And the person who was doing all the bashing, what they didn't realize was they were on the same path at best as most of the rest of the people in the pool. And the the chances of that person outright scooping or, or even really getting in a small chop was very small. Um, my, my friend, if he got through that week, he would have been in a great spot. He ended up winning nothing. But uh, he put him, it, it's about putting yourself in a good spot. And then when it doesn't work out, you just get over it. Because, you know, in the beginning, I said it a lot last year, I expect not to win. It's, it's, it, it's, it's the mentality that I need to have to play these things because – the closer you get to it, it's going to start feeling really real. But, you know, I try to remind myself throughout that it's a small buy-in. You might be playing – the one that I was talking about is a $25 buy-in with 20,000 entries. It's only 25 bucks, but if you get to the end, you're playing for a lot of money. And it would be really nice to have some lockdown hammer hammer-type picks. The only way you're going to have those is if you set yourself up for it and – those teams end up being the teams that you want to have. It might not work out. Some of them might tear, tear their ACL. But I'll, I'll tell you, um, I'll tell you another concept which uh, I, I need. A, I think I, I'd like to do a little more work on because um, I, I literally don't know the answer, and I really should. Um, is is the idea of how to deal with 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 multiple entries? Okay, um, in general, um, if. If I mean, if you're like us, I mean, whatever. I mean, if you play, play one entry in a pool, that's one thing. But we, I mean, I play multiple entries in every pool that I'm in, and it ranges from, like you said, from like five entries to ten entries to twenty entries to whatever. And how to handle a portfolio of entries is not easy. It, 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 it's um, no. it's not easy. As a matter of fact, and I had a long conversation with my partner the other day. He was, you know, he's suggesting, and he's like, listen, um. You know, how many entries is too many? You know, like if, if if you have too many entries, are you are you taking your own money or or you or you're not doing it right or something like that? And and there was actually somebody put a video out in the last couple of days about about how Survivor could be I forget the word he looked. It was it was kind of a terrible argument, but I think he was just justifying not not max entering circular. He's like, oh, if it's too many, I'll end up like doing whatever. 
but but um the the the, the thing that's that's interesting is that I play DFS a lot and DFS you can enter up to 150 lineups in certain tournaments and so much of your skill is is not coming up necessarily with good plays okay because here, here's the so here's here's the uh, the breakdown right so first you got to come up with a good play that's one thing then you have to kind of come up with a good lineup which is a combination of plays and that lineup's got to have your plays work well together then yeah. if you're going to play like 150 lineups you have to make it so that the lineups work well with one another you know yeah. It's really not easy, and the reason why I like DFS is because it's very much resembling of what I do for in my real job, which my which, which I manage a hedge fund, manage stock portfolios, because the same thing. I can tell you what a good company is, great, but then you got to tell me if that's a good stock. That's the next thing. Then you have to tell me if you're going to put you know four stocks together in a portfolio, how they work well together, you know, and and it's it's very interesting. So so. I honestly don't know. Like, and I sometimes feel like I'm winging it. Like if I'm, if I have like 10, 10 entries in something and I like like three teams, I'm like, oh, I'll do four, three, three. I mean, it feels right, but I know it's not right. You know, I know there's got to be. A I'll I'll, let, let me tell let me tell you what we do. So we, we like to work in, in even numbers. Um, so this is, it also goes with, we expect to lose a game. And the reason that's a good mindset to have in week one, just starting with from there is we want to think, what will we do if we lose one of our two of our games? Will we like how many entries we have left at that point? How, and then how are we further going to break it down from there? So, like, if we have 10 entries, we will never we, – we've never done it. We'll never go, like, 5, 3, 2, uh, 5, 4, 1. We, we, we would never do that. Uh, it, 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 to, to us, it doesn't make any sense because – we would rather advance multiple entries from week one and week two using uh, blocks of teams. And then we can split off from those blocks and we'll never use like if, 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 and if we were to like, if we were to do 20 entries of Circa, we would never add in like one or two entries of Kansas city. I, I, I just wouldn't do that because the last thing I want is for that one Kansas city entry to be the one entry that we have left in week 15 and we can't even use them. Um, so I, I, I like to use the mid tier teams to try to advance something. And then you just hope it works out by saving as many, you're sacrificing entries more or less every single week by taking these, these mid range teams, uh, to set up a really strong entry. That's going to be more unique, um, with a lot, lots of viable options at, uh, at the end of the season. I definitely think though, that, um, that how you apportion your, um, your selections uh, really, as you might imagine, it really does depend on the week. Like if there's like a week where, where you have, you know, two just super duper, you know, plays for lack of a better description, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then, then you can, then you can, you can, you can go nuts with that, you know, regardless of how many, whereas if you have like a, like an impossible week, um, you could spread out a little bit more, you know. Um, but then again, you can make the, the counter argument that if it's an impossible week, if you take a little more risk that week and you get away with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody else is diluting all their shit. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So it's uh, listen, it's it's all it's it's all quite it's all a lot of fun. Um, what, what are you gonna What are you gonna allow me to talk about just to, uh, for for future parts of the season? Any anything, or do you want to save it for next week? You do a, a couple things that jump out. Yeah, but you want you want to talk about the the season a little bit? Uh, I, have, I have three weeks that I'm looking at. Let's, let's look um, at it. I'm pulling up. I have it up. But you want to pull up? You want me to share your screen? You want me to? You want to? Do uh, no, no. You, uh, I have it on my computer. All right, go for it. Um, you uh, let's open up. Uh, okay. Uh, week seven. And we're up. Week seven is one of the weeks. I think actually this is maybe the furthest I really went out when I was mapping. Um, and the reason I stopped here is because of who's on top. It's it's Seattle. Um, and it's very interesting because Seattle has, as it is right now, four plays all year. One, three, seven, ten. So let's, let's, as go, it, let's go back. As it is. So Seattle, yeah, they're a four and a half point favorite in week one. In week three, they are a six and a half point favorite, but they are like ninth on the list, right? Correct. 
And then, so what? So yeah, I was going to get to that. So what happens here is, assuming this, the pick percentage plays out uh, for this week, which is three percent, which is hard to believe. Week three, because of how many viable options there are, they're not going to be a highly picked team there yeah. either. So when we get to seven, you look at the order. Assume the order is going to be exactly what this is. Okay, well, Kansas City, a bunch of people have already picked them, and some people want to save them. Um, they also have, uh, if you're in a special pool like Circa, you know, they, they play on Christmas, so it's a team you might want to save for that. Um, Philadelphia, well, you could have used them already, or you might want to save them for later. Uh, Baltimore. Oh, now every now every spreads three. So what's going to happen here is no one's going to take Kansas City, Philly, Baltimore because you're, you're going to take like a five or six point favorite, or you can just drop to some trashy three point favorite, or you can just jump on you know the team that everyone thinks is going to go zero and seventeen Arizona uh, against Arizona. Seattle is going to be very 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 heavily picked as it is right now in week seven. Um, if so for me, I know I'm not taking Seattle here. I'm, I'm just never going to do it. So it's a matter of, okay, do I need to use them in my pool? Um, in my pool with five double pick weeks, uh, yes, I need to use them. So I will be very heavy on Seattle in weeks one and three in that pool because I don't want – if I'm not going to use them in seven, I can't just not use them at all throughout the year or hope I can use them at the end of the year. I guess yeah, I guess you could use them in week 18 and, and hope, you know, they're playing for something because it's double picks. But that's that's a good thing to look at is when there's a standalone game with a large separation between the top and then the next tier of favorites, what's the best way to react to that? Sometimes it's just take that team because they might be so heavily used up until that point that that's, that's the pick. Seattle is not going to be the case. Probably, I mean, what do you think? 90% of the people will have Seattle available or more yeah, when it gets there. Uh, so that, that, that one really stood out to me. The other one's a smaller one for unique pools, but it's week nine. Let's see. All right. So week nine, very similar to week seven with Seattle, is Cleveland. Um, it, again, against uh, hosting Arizona. And look at Kansas City's the second biggest favorite. Uh, you have Pittsburgh there. No one will have used them by that time. So the first teams that people are going to be looking at, as it is here, will be Cleveland, which everybody will have, or Pittsburgh. Yep. Um, you know, there's going to be oh, New England. I'm sorry, New England as well. But people aren't going to be playing Baltimore, Kansas City. So you got to think about at these spreads, what would your strategy be? Um, and if you're not ever going to use Cleveland. And if you're going to have other options, so let's say like Arizona ends up being pretty good or not as horrible, Cleveland's still going to be favored, but then they're still going to be heavily picked. They're, you know, they might be tied with Pittsburgh or New England, which and then they all like they're all like 20 percent picked. But you have other options, so you don't have to even have Cleveland available. So in my in one of my pools, I'm definitely going to be taking Cleveland in three. With my with all those double pick weeks, because if I'm not going to use them in nine, I, I you know it'd be nice to use them. And honestly, this sounds absolutely you know crazy, but you know if you want to take an absolute huge flyer at the beginning, and, and it's one where you have tons of double pick weeks. I mean, you could just take them in week one. I know it sounds ridiculous, but taking Cleveland as as a one point dog in Cincinnati is 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 not nearly as bad as taking some of the other teams that are that are favored. Um, the point is, if you're not going to take a team at a particular week because of how it looks, and I just don't think I would take Cleveland anyway because there's there's Pittsburgh as an option, there's New England as an option. If I know I'm going to have those te those teams, I can look to try to take Cleveland earlier in the season in week I don't know seven or three. Uh, what 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 are your thoughts on this Cleveland? I, I just don't see how I'd ever I, I'd ever pick them in any in any reality I, I be, the, because, because the safety net with Pittsburgh and New England. I think both of the examples you used are pretty sharp. Um, the uh, with, with the idea that just both of those teams are going to look so good in seven and nine uh, Cleveland in, in your one example in Seattle and the other, that they're going to be just so freaking popular. Um, and if you could somehow get away, like you said, with, 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 with pissing away early, 
Um, I think it puts set yourself set yourself it sets yourself up for success. But again, you're going to have to come up with something in those weeks <laughs> eventually. Well, th- that's what. Well, that's why I wanted to point out the the Pittsburgh and New England being there in nine with Cleveland. Sp- spreads are going to change, but when there's multiple options that are going to be there for you, I'm not. You know, if most people are n- are not going to take any of those three teams in a standard pool going to week nine. So if you have if you know you're going to have three choices, it makes more sense. To, you know, if if you're in between teams, taking Cleveland in three or whatever when I, uh, other one I said, so because you don't need Cleveland, if you're not going to take them anyway, and you're going to drop off and, and drop to the, the next tier of uh, which would be Pittsburgh, um, New England, then you, you then then you can you can use them earlier. One one other thing that that you've alluded to like several times, but I figure it's important to to stress is that. Depending on the rules of your pool, it really is going to impact your um, your, your 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 analysis. And we're going to try our best to cover both. In other words, we're going to talk. Our main goal, our main focus, is going to be on just regular straight single pick pools, unless we talk about our own specific pools where we'll get into it. Yeah. But but we're also going to try to segment. You know, like what types of plays are particularly good where where you're requiring double picks. So basically. When I just mean double picks, I just mean that instead of needing 18 winners, you know, you need like 30. You know what I mean? Pretty much. Yeah. Um, and as you might imagine, if you are going to need 30, so to speak, then you're going to have to use like all the dregs of society. <laughs> yeah. And and so any opportunity to use them should not be should 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 be utilized, you know, and and, and future value and, and saving teams for the future is just so much more important in double pick pools um, than, than in single pick pools. Um, now, one thing I did this year for the March Madness Survivor is I actively seeked out a pool with a certain set of rules because I wanted to be able to take advantage of a situation if it came up. And, <laughs> and, and, and it got lucky and it did. We didn't win, but it was pretty amazing what happened. I, I wanted to be in a pool where the picks don't lock until each game starts for that day. And the reason I wanted that is when the results of the games come in in March Madness Survivor, where each game is going to have a huge impact on everybody's remaining entries, the perfect situation happened. Um, San Diego State upset Alabama to open the day. And for some reason, there were like 26 people out of like 80 that took um, – whoever the favorite was against the 15 seed, uh, Creighton. They took Creighton, but they had already used San Diego State in a previous round. So they boxed themselves out. And it was, it was, it was, it was unbelievable because that's, that's why I wanted to get in that pool. And then a third of the pool got knocked out, literally boxing themselves out. The pool that I would like – I'm not going to – I'm already in the pools that I want, but depending on – when you look at this, what, what I see is I would I would love to be in a pool that has doubles in those two weeks that I just said, seven and nine, because everyone is going to have those teams available, Cleveland in nine and Seattle in seven. And there would be a lot of opportunity for EV to gain by not taking those teams at these spreads when you get to those weeks. And as a lead up into them, I might actually play very conservatively to get there to try to realize that I that EV by dropping to a couple three point favorites. So another thing you can do is if if something sticks out to you, find a pool that, you know, has the rules that, you know, that fit the strategy that you think would, you know, could, you know, give yourself the best chance of winning. Yeah. So uh, I encourage everybody to join the true dfs discord and and if if you have questions in there you know i mean or opinions or anything you know just remember that we're that we're 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 trying to be serious about this we're 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 be you know where we want positive feedback we want whatever and so don't 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 be don't just use it to whine you know whatever um, and if you have questions, throw them out there. You know, uh, Michael's really, really good about about uh, 
about responding to intelligent questions, you know, and, and I don't mean like that, like, the, you know, the, the, oh my God, you asked a stupid question. I'm not going to answer it. You know, listen, we can tell the difference between somebody speaking a pain in the neck, you know, whatever it is. Um, but, but, but make, but, but get in there because the, the level of discourse in there is, is really improving. And, um, it used to be that again, that two plus two was like, I mean, they had that, that, that good disc, that good channel. I don't even know if people go there anymore. The same like three people, I guess, and one guy always complains, whatever. But um, but uh, feel, but make sure you, you get in there, and uh, that's pretty much all I think I have, or we should have for now. Every Wednesday, unless things happen, you know, we can we, we will, you know, we, we plan on doing this at like three o'clock or so Eastern time, and again, I I, I don't want to do the live stream because i don't want i don't think i want to take questions during this you know what i mean i think i want to just kind of just get through it um but uh so i think we'll just do zoom and then we'll just put it up on youtube like that and uh um i think that's pretty much it uh we'll we'll give you know we'll give our favorite picks i'll call i i almost started a brand the uh like uh michael's brave pick yeah i almost tried to <laughs> quite brand it quite properly yet but i'm, I'm thinking about it because every once in a while, you know, you'll, you'll throw you'll throw a, a, a real off offbeat one there. But, that's but I think what's really fun about these pools that everyone needs to know is I, I I'm not even certain that the advice I'm giving is right. No, of course and not. and that and that's what's really fun. I I I I hate chess because you can't get lucky and beat somebody. And poker poker I love poker because anyone can win in an individual hand or even an individual tournament. Uh, Survivor has so many variables, and they and they're constantly changing. There's good. You could have the perfect save, and then bam, Mahomes tears his ACL. Yeah. Knock on wood. Yeah. Um, and and, ev and everything changes. The COVID year was brutal. I had it, and then I had, I had a unique team, and then they COVIDed out all the wide receivers for yeah. for the for Cleveland, and I had to take them anyway at like a six point worst favorite, and they, and they and they lost. That's what. But that's what makes it fun. Because it's not, it's it's much less. I, I I'm just gonna say it's not solvable. Because even if it were solvable, since you don't know what's gonna happen later, you can make your picks hoping that certain teams end up being better than others, and put in position yourself betting on a certain team to be a big favorite later in the season, and have and being, you know, one of the more one of the less entries available to uh, to take that entry. So uh, don't you know make your picks. And then just don't second guess it after the fact. It's not worth it. The game, you, you make a pick and some team wins and some team loses. Um, and uh, if you're going to take chances, take them early. Uh, there's nothing worse than being there at the end and you got to decide between, oh, am I going to take the 10 point favorite with eight other people or, I'm, or am I going to jump on someone else at a three point favorite when there's 11 people left? That, those are not fun decisions to make. And the right decision is obviously to take three point favorite, but it's not fun to have not use that team earlier in the year only to not take them anyway, take your chances early. And if you get knocked out, enjoy the rest of the season. One other thing is that if you didn't, if you didn't really know it already, it really takes you to play survivor and really appreciate how much variance there is in football. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, just the, 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 the ways teams win out of nowhere and the ways teams lose out of nowhere i mean eric remember that that dallas game last year they gave up the ball on the two yard line and we had dallas we had been waiting we had been on we've been waiting for weeks for months for that game we we're the only one on them i think out of like 14 people left and dallas gave up the ball on the two and houston went run 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 stuff and then dallas drove the field and won the game with like a minute left i mean like they were like less than one percent to win and they won i mean that's I was incredibly lucky huge chalk and then for, and then the year before when they when the 40 percent of the field was on the freaking was on the raiders against the jets and oh god and, and the jets literally needed to stop one play from the 50 yard line yeah that was that was uh that that was rough. That that was the most EV loss I've ever had in one day in gambling. Was that day? That was that was pretty painful. All right, uh, but but that's what makes it fun. That's what makes. All it right, fun. listen. Uh, I will see you next week. Good luck, everybody, and uh, let's get it. See you next week. See you later. Thanks, Eric.